You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. Today's episode was actually a topic I was requested to cover. Um, I had a request to do a mini episode talking about how art affects our learning and development. So this is your brain on art. I feel like who art ed. Try to spice it. Who art is? Mr. Wood art ed me. <laughs> yeah. Either way, it, it's ambiguous. It works on so many levels. I know. I thought a great start. Welcome to Who Arted, where we explore visual arts in an audio medium. I'm your host, Kyle Wood. Today, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the artistic process and what we know about it based on neuroscience. Art has been shown to impact brainwave patterns, emotions, and the nervous system. Some of these effects may seem obvious. When we create a work of art that we're proud of, we feel that sense of accomplishment. It raises our serotonin levels and all of that sort of stuff. In short, we feel good when we create good artwork. The thing is, it doesn't even have to be good artwork. Studies indicate that our brains respond to the process of creation, even if the end result isn't ready to ship off to the museum. Studies have also shown that people value the things they create because they invest themselves in the act of creation. I suppose that's why I love Ikea so much. It's not just that they gave me some sleek modern furniture with whimsical names that I can never pronounce. They put me to work putting it together, and as a result, I feel some pride and accomplishment at having succeeded in deciphering the series of text-free diagrams and assembling a new chair I convinced myself was meant to wobble slightly. You know, it's more comfortable that way, right? But seriously, scientists did a study where people were given items fully assembled. The other group was given the same items in pieces that they needed to assemble. The group that had to put things together were shown to value the items and were significantly more likely to want to keep those items at the conclusion of the study. Now, there's long been this sort of stereotypical image of the artist as being, I don't know, what's the polite word for not too bright? But creating art actually requires several advanced functions of the brain. Artists are complex thinkers developing a visual language to express ideas and emotions. As a result, artists have generally been found to have above-average IQs. They typically are found to have better observational skills and a better memory. Many attribute this to the way that art affects neuroplasticity. Now, plasticity is the ability to be shaped or molded. Neuro is referring to the neurons, the cells that make up our brains. So when we put that together, the idea of neuroplasticity is that the human brain is malleable. It is shapeable. This is why we teachers are always talking about that growth mindset. As we face different situations, our brains continue to grow and adapt, making different connections. According to some neuroscientists at the University of Sydney, engaging with art can be beneficial for mental well-being. Studies have found that creating art reorganizes the frontal cortex. Specifically, people have been found to have enhanced creativity and diminished inhibitions as a result of engaging in art making. In other words, getting to work with the creative process makes us more creative and more comfortable taking risks. I remember in college, I was talking to a friend of mine, and he was talking about how he hated Picasso because, in his words, everything I think of, it turns out Picasso already did it. He left nothing unexplored. Now, the thing is, when we're looking to innovate, everything's already been done before, except the things that the previous generations never imagined. Setting aside my long-standing disdain for Picasso, I'll stick with him for an example. In his day, abstract art was a new concept to Europeans. For generations before them, artists thought, we have still life, we have portraits and landscapes, and that's the whole universe of possibilities. It was innovators like Hilma of Klint who explored spiritualism and broke new ground with automatic drawings and abstraction. Matisse and others stopped looking at color as describing the form and started looking at color for its own sake. 
Picasso looked outside of European traditions and drew inspiration from African masks as he mixed perspectives to create a new language of abstraction. If we had asked previous generations, they may have said how Leonardo da Vinci left nothing unexplored. But there are always new frontiers to be reached. Engaging with the arts helps us to become more open to new possibilities. It rewires our brains to be more creative and to have the courage to explore our new ideas. Now, I do want to take a moment to talk about the courage to create. The creative process leaves people often feeling a little vulnerable. As I said, studies have shown that creators often have an increased perception of the value of the things that they create, but that doesn't mean others share that increased perception of value. When I make something, I feel pretty good about it, but that doesn't mean anyone else does. And one of the greatest skills I learned in art school was how to engage in effective critiques. Often, well-meaning people will say something like, there are no bad ideas. They're trying to say that we shouldn't be criticizing other people's ideas. The thing is, there are bad ideas. And holding back from criticism is a bad idea. Studies have shown that brainstorming sessions result in more and stronger ideas when people critically engage, they question and pose problems. There's an old saying that to be creative is to allow yourself to make mistakes, but to be an artist is to know which ones to keep. We hear all about left brain and right brain activity with the whole myth that some are creatively oriented and others are analytical, but the truth is that innovation is a whole brain activity. I mean, everything's a whole brain activity if you really think about it, but the creative process is about iteration, exploring different connections, analysis, and revision. An artist needs to allow themselves and their mind to be open to unexpected combinations and connections and sort of take those creative leaps. But at the same time, they have to look critically at those connections they're making and determine which ones are the good ones worth keeping. Now, when we're thinking about critiques and effective feedback, the key is to be seeking improvement. Whether brainstorming in the early process of creation or critiquing a work that's near completion, you can make your feedback constructive by telling others how their work could be improved. You might think of the improv rule, always responding with a yes and when someone brings something to the venture. You start with acceptance and welcoming of their input, but then build off of that work. It's about making connections. One last little bit. According to a study conducted at University College London, that transformative experience of art doesn't require you to be a creator. Art has an incredible impact on the viewer as well. Participants in the study, they got brain scans as they looked at works of art. And as they looked at artworks they liked, blood flow to the areas the brain associated with pleasure increased, sometimes by as much as 10%. That is on par with the effect measured when looking at a loved one. The pupils dilate to allow more light to come in to literally take in that image more fully. And as I said, blood flow increases to the areas of the brain associated with pleasure. So take some time to find your style. Surround yourself with artworks that you enjoy looking at and engage in the creative process because it will make you a happier and a healthier person. Art is what makes us human. It is how and why we got out of the trees. Art is all about innovation. It is what allows us to envision a better tomorrow and to express our ideas to get other people on board with that plan. So take the time to learn and grow as an artist, because when you become a better artist, you become a better human, and everyone around you is better for that. 
Now, as I said, this was an episode that was suggested to me. I would love to hear your feedback. Do you want to hear more episodes like this or something else? Let me know your thoughts. You can email me at whoartedpodcast at gmail.com. And of course, if you're enjoying this show, please do me a favor, leave a rating or review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted, part of the Airwave Media Podcast Network. If you found this tolerable, please leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week on social media at Who Arted Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And of course, on the website, whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.